No. X-Men Apocalypse is directed by Brian Singer and stars James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Olivia Munn, Oscar Isaac, Jennifer Lawrence, amongst many others, and is the third movie in the X-Men prequel trilogy, and takes place in the 1980s, where we see that Xavier has started the school for gifted youngsters, and it is thriving in full form, where new mutants are coming in, and things are going really well in the mutant world. However, there is a new villain on the rise in the form of N. Sabah Noor, played by Oscar Isaac, who plans to destroy the world and bring in new ideals to it because he believes that mankind has followed blind leaders and that everything that this world has been built on should fall and from the ashes of that he will build a better one. His words, not mine. Everything they built will fall and from the ashes of their world We'll build a better one. So I went in with some skepticism to this movie. The trailers didn't particularly interest me, and I wasn't too excited in seeing the kind of path that the movies were trying to follow. Nevertheless, I went in with an open mind, and I decided to watch the movie, despite the fact that I had read some scathing remarks online, but I decided to go in with a clear head and judge the movie for myself. And in my opinion, X-Men Apocalypse is pretty freaking awesome. I'm not saying that this is the best X-Men movie ever made, don't expect me to say it's that, but it's definitely a wonderfully done movie. It has a lot of great things in it, and it's definitely one of the more ambitious X-Men movies made so far. I do have some flaws with the movie though, but I will get into that in a little bit. But first, let's talk about the pros for a little bit. If I told you that the acting in this movie was not good, I'd be lying to you. Everyone in this movie performs to their full potential and beyond. McAvoy, Fassbender, Lawrence, Isaac, we'll talk about Isaac in a second, Olivia Munn, Ty Sheridan, Sophie Turner, they're all great actors and they've all done a wonderful job at bringing their characters to life on screen. McAvoy and Fassbender have been there since X-Men First Class and their characters have evolved on screen ever since 2011 and it's amazing to see where Xavier and Magneto have come in the last few years as their younger counterparts are concerned. In that way, when you see the scenes with McAvoy and Fassbender, they are some brilliant scenes. The conversations with them are still really intriguing. You see that these two gentlemen still respect each other despite the fact that they have these different ideologies that keep clashing. And it's wonderful to see that this interplay still exists and it's one of the strongest aspects of this movie. The writing as well, it's a very in interestingly written movie. There are a lot of ideas in this movie that are used which are very bold and very risky. The movie is a much more risky movie than say The Last Stand or X-Men 2 or even X-Men Days of Future Past. The ideas expressed in the apocalypse are very interestingly done. There are a lot of scenes in this movie which are take place inside the mind and scenes where Xavier is using Cerebro and a lot of mental games as well as physical actions are taking place at the same time and they're melded in really well with each other and they work really well when you're watching the movie and they make for a very compelling narrative. Another thing which is great about the movie is that it's a visually stunning film. The trailers were not too promising when it came to the visual sense. It looked like a lot of it was done on this big green screen and looked really fake to say the least. And surprisingly in the movie it looks very much in camera. It looks wonderful. The environments look great. The colors are wonderful. The characters all look amazing. Everything is done to perfection in the final version of the movie and you gotta give Brian Singer and the visual effects department and everybody involved in the movie a lot of props for that. Even the score is great. I know I talk about score a lot but the score of this movie is pretty solid. It's a great score. It's a very menacing score. The tunes for Apocalypse are particularly memorable and they do set up a very menacing tone for the character as well. Now that we're getting back to it, Oscar Isaac as Apocalypse steals some of this movie. I 
cannot stress on how much I really like the character of Apocalypse. He always was a character who I didn't know that much about, and to be honest, I never knew much from the comics. I knew some things about him. In the movie, they do a very good job of introducing him to a world where not everyone knows him through the comics. That's why when you watch the movie, you feel the character's motivations, you feel this power radiating through him, and the performance by Oscar Isaac is brilliant. In fact, it's one of the better villain performances I've seen in a while, and it really feels like Oscar Isaac went full method for it. Like, it's quite amazing, but it seems like he really went into this role. I do have some problems with the movie, though, particularly two major problems. These are the only two big problems I had with the movie. For starters, I do have a problem with the first 20 minutes of the movie. They are a little slow. It takes a little time for it to start up, and by the time it does start up, however, after a scene in the forest with Magneto, the movie really picks up after that. But the movie as a whole does a great job of really building itself up. However, the first 20 minutes do feel like the movie is faltering a lot, and it doesn't feel as refined as the footage that comes in later. Secondly, the problem I had is the third act. The film kind of saves all its action until the last 30 minutes of the movie. That's not to say that the action isn't good, it's just that you want to spread out the action throughout the movie. However, in the movie, when the action f finale starts, it feels like it's a completely different movie in a lot of ways. Suddenly, it's a very different film. I'm not going to go into spoilers, but that's a different spoiler review for that. But in the movie, it just doesn't fit in the narrative structure that the film has established over the last hour 30 minutes. That's why it feels kind of rushed in some ways, and it feels overblown when you see all this spectacle happen on screen. Let's talk about some of the critics for a moment, because this really needs to be addressed. This is a very divisive movie. Not everyone is going to walk out of the movie saying that it's a masterpiece, or saying that it's a great movie, or saying it's a good movie as well. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to be turned off by the movie. In fact, in all honesty, X-Men Apocalypse is not as good as X-Men Days of Future Past. And that might affect a lot of people when reflecting on it from a critical standpoint. The thing is, it's a divisive movie. So I can expect some people to have very mixed opinions compared to what I might have or what someone else might have. So it's one of those movies you have to just build on interpretation. So if you want to listen to the 51%, go ahead. But it's not the rating you should base your entire movie experience on. You should be allowed to judge it for yourself. I'm going to give X-Men Apocalypse an 8 out of 10. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I will have some more reviews coming out soon, and I will see you guys later.